Hello everyone and welcome to the EP2 of Tech News. First we have Inkscape 1.3.1 which was released. It is a maintenance and bug fix release, fixing many critical and irritating bugs and even bringing two new features. The most important fixes and changes in the release are more than 30 crash or freeze fixes, a new feature to disable snapping to grid lines, a new feature to split text into its characters or letters, the Shep Builder tool now creates an appropriate number of nodes. Activating a layer in the layer dialog no longer requires you to double click to enter the layer on the canvas to be able to work in it. No more auto expanding layers in the layers dialog and improved behavior on deleting and moving layers. Other changes are also there, for example right clicking now applies the change to the selected object, not whatever group it is in. The page tools size field no longer refuses to be edited, improved handle visibility with dark desk colors, multiple improvements for converting text objects to path, PDFs that could not be opened with Inkscape 1.3 can now be opened or imported again. The English terms for life effects can now be searched for even if you use Inkscape in another language, so you can better follow the tutorials. With many other changes and bug fixes, all of the changes are listed completely in their official release notes. Head over to their website from the link in the description. I mentioned Inkscape first because most of my viewers are probably interested in design also along with Linux, so you can just go and check it out from there. Next we have the Firefox release 120.0, offered to release channel users on November 21st, 2023. Firefox supports a new copy link without side tracking feature in the context menu which ensures that copied links are no longer containing tracking information. Firefox now supports a setting inside preferences within privacy and security to enable global privacy control with this opt-in new feature. Firefox informs the websites that users don't want their data to be shared or sold. This feature is enabled in private browsing by default. Now I'm just reading everything from the official website of Firefox. If you want you can go there and check it out from the link in my description. Firefox private window and ETP strict privacy configuration now enhance the Canvas APIs with fingerprinting protection, thereby continuing to protect their users' online privacy. Firefox is also rolling out cookie banner blocker by default in open private windows for users in Germany during the coming weeks. Firefox will also now auto-refuse cookies and dismiss annoying cookie banners for supported sites. Firefox has enabled URL tracking protection by default in private windows for users in Germany. Firefox will remove non-essential URL query parameters that are often used to track users across the web. They have also now imported TLS Trust Anchors, example certificates from the operating system root store. This will be enabled by default on Windows, macOS and Android and if needed, they can be turned on from the settings. Keyboard shortcuts have now been added for editing and deleting a selected credential on About Logins. For editing Alt plus Enter, Option plus Return on macOS and for deleting Alt plus Backspace, Option plus Delete on macOS. Users on Ubuntu Linux now have the ability to import from Chromium when both are installed as snap packages. Picture in Picture now supports corner snapping on Windows and Linux. Just hold the control as you move the PIP window. GNOME Shell 45.1 update has arrived in Ubuntu 23.10. As noted on the OMG Ubuntu website, there are specific fixes which are mentioned in the official upstream changelog which include fix scroll handling on sliders, handle unredirection as a part of the state transition in the overview, handle desktop windows during workspace animations, and fix unexpected focus changes with multiple window apps, improve recorder indicator in light style, and fix calendar pop-up shrinking on date changes. There is also a representation of the minor bug which has been fixed and more information is also there. You can definitely go and check it out from the link provided in the description again. And then we have GNOME Community Weekly Progress Highlight. As a part of an infrastructure initiative backed by the Sovereign Tech Fund, community members have made substantial progress with weekly updates. Key advancements include home encryption, support for system D homed in account service has been integrated, making it an initial step towards improved encryption and user experience. Collaborative efforts are ongoing for the design and task definition related to home encryption. 
Then we have XDT Desktop Portal, enhancements to existing portals, maintenance task, and introduction of new portal APIs such as the USB portal. The USB portal facilitates the creation and monitoring of apps using USB devices with app-specific permissions. Additional support for CSS variables, custom properties in GTK. Then we have improvements for GNOME Shell or Mutter, profiling, instrumentation, and integration of the Tracy profiler, revealing actionable performance bugs. Enhancements in the notifications covering both platform APIs and user interface, including the grouping of notification by app in GNOME Shell. Then we have ongoing improvements in GNOME online accounts, which are being ported to GTK4 with enhancements in authentication integration. GNOME Core apps and libraries have some improvements, such as Maps now displays mode of transportation icon in turn-by-turn -turn navigation, enhancing user guidance. Some new additions are also there in the GNOME Circle apps and libraries, with acceptance of switcheroo and decibels into GNOME Circle, providing image conversion and audio file playing functionalities. And then we have some updates on third-party projects. Then we have some key highlights from this week in KDE, preparing for the Plasma 6 feature freeze. As Plasma 6 approaches its feature freeze, the focus is shifting towards bug fixing and polishing. Most planned features are completed, with bug reports, especially minor ones, being promptly addressed. Here are some notable changes along with some quick recap. KD6 Mega Release, scheduled for February 28, 2024. This Mega Release will encompass Plasma 6, Frameworks 6, and apps from Gear 24.02. Plasma Wayland Sessions Improvement, apps with unsaved changes prompt user to save before shutting down or restarting. Bounce Keys functionality is also at full work with Plasma Wayland session. Application-specific enhancements are also there. Improvements in Partition Manager, ensuring accurate entries in FS tab. Immediate appearance of files and folders created in desktop outside of Plasma. Swift updating of the user picture in kickoff after changing in system settings. Visual and functional improvements are also there, such as the fixes for visual glitches in Kate and other Ktext editor-based apps. User-friendly handling of Plasma widgets incompatible with Plasma 6. New option to reboot without applying offline updates on the next boot-up. Widget organization has some new update with battery and brightness widgets split into brightness and color with power and battery for better organization. Application-specific updates are also there. Gmail gains support for frameless styling in Plasma 6 Breeze theme. Revamped kill unresponsive window dialog in Plasma Wayland session. We have some miscellaneous additions also with some bug-related changes. For a comprehensive view of the KDE contributions, visit planet.kde.org. The link is in the description. Some highlights of the Cosmic Desktop Environment for the November feature update. In the latest update from the Cosmic Desktop Environment, the development team showcases a range of substantial enhancements and new features, providing users with an improved and more versatile computing experience. Here's a detailed overview. We have some floating window arrangement. The introduction of a new logic ensures that windows open consistently, making them easily accessible with visible headers. It works by slightly shifting new windows away from the center. Upcoming designs will allow users to tile floating windows for enhanced organization. Next, we have changes in drop-down and image button widgets. Newly added widgets play a crucial role in the implementation of appearance and wallpaper settings. The drop-down widget facilitates advanced menus and multiple list of options, separators and optional headers. Additionally, saved wallpapers are now visible on both lock and login screens. The Cosmic Text Editor is also there. The text editor undergoes significant development with features such as window tabs, project-based file organization, Vim-style editing, background change detection, and syntax highlighting. These improvements aim to provide a robust and efficient text editing experience. Integration of the MPRIS audio interface into the Cosmic's audio applets bring a common API for controlling media players. This includes mechanism for discovery, querying and track list interface and basic playback control, enhancing the overall audio experience. Some refactoring is done in the workspace code, a strategic decision which has been made to simplify workspaces by preventing windows from spanning multiple into multiple monitors. This refactor is not only simplifying workspaces but also addressing various bugs across different areas, offering a more stable and streamlined user experience. Compositor improvements are also there. The compositor undergoes substantial improvements 
improvements including custom theming support, enhanced tracking, compatibility with the latest NVIDIA driver, input, method, editor, IME support for languages like Chinese and Japanese, and more. These enhancements contribute to a more visually appealing and functionally robust compositor. Next, we have security context support. A new security context is introduced, granting specific application cosmic applets access to special system privileges while imposing restrictions on others. These enhances the overall security framework of the desktop environment and at the same time it gives some lower level access to the applets for enabling them to do some specific task. XDG and DBus activation support. The introduction of XDG and DBus activation support allows seamless interaction between applications, preventing unwanted claims of window focus and a single instance application support ensures a smoother navigation experience. Cosmic DE now expands its presence by successfully running on Asahi Linux and being added to NixOS. This integration marks a milestone extending the availability to a broader range of open source projects. Open source Vulkan drivers for NVIDIA GPUs are now fully conformant with Vulkan 1.0. A significant milestone has been achieved by the in-development open-source NVIDIA Vulkan driver. Notably, this accomplishment of hitting Vulkan 1.0 conformance is a noteworthy advancement. And it's important to highlight that the process is not directly from NVIDIA but from the individuals contributing to Mesa drivers. This achievement follows the integration of the new back-end compiler, a necessary step in this process. However, it's important to note that there is still considerable work ahead. Xtrans indicates that heading into 2024, they are approaching the capability to advertise Vulkan 1.3, but this will require extensive compiler work. Additionally, efforts are being made to extend support to Maxwell GPUs. Once the compiler achieves a more feature-complete status, the focus will shift to in-depth examination of applications, addressing app-specific bugs and making performance improvements. While the open-source NVIDIA drivers remain in an experimental phase, the lookout suggests that exciting developments can be anticipated throughout the coming year. So, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.